G'day peeps, I'm Sheila Berger. Welcome to Heart Talk. Today my guest is my good old pal, Ken Thornton. He's been here many times before. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for having me on your show. You know, Ken and I started off talking about the, uh, about the vision quest. And he was telling about his very disciplined way of doing this quest and, and the benefits of it. Okay. And in our talk, I'm going, well, okay, Ken, that's good. But what about for the girls? What about for the young mothers? How can we, um, how can we adapt a smaller version of it? Okay, and this is kind of how our conversation went. Well, this is how all of our conversations go. He'll come up with something that we're to talk about, and then I'm going, okay, well, here's the girl version. <laughs> so we have found a good balance in discussing different issues, having the male and the female perspective. Isn't that right? That's right. And we kind of compliment each other on the show. So, yeah, right. I think it was great. Well, okay. And we've been on this series about the divine masculine. And I, I want to make clear that even though we talk about the masculine, that we all agree that there is the, the uh, we're, we're looking for the balance of the male and female in all of us. Don't you don't you agree? Yeah, I think we're coming to a point right now where the women are finally getting their voice, you know, and uh, they're becoming very strong right now. And uh, so right now it's a matter of balancing things out, I think. Well, we're all it seems like we're always hearing stories about, you know, about the females and. In this series of the Divine Masculine, I was interested in hearing the the male perspective of of the incredible changes uh, that are going on in the awakening process for the guys, because there is a um, in, in my experience with the, with the guys that I've met, there is a, um, there is, there's some interesting changes going on in the old way we have relationships. Yeah, this is true. And if, if you look at the twin flames, there's a uh, interesting perspective on the uh, the females gaining empowerment and uh, wanting their men to be more sensitive and open and listen and uh, open their heart a little more. I, I see that happening. Right. Uh, and it's great. Uh, I myself prefer a woman with a with a strong mind, but also at the same time, balanced, have discernment. Uh, I, I, I do like that. One aspect I do see, though, is that uh, in some of the contexts, let's use the twin flame, for example, a lot of them are trying to inadvertently control their men, saying this is the path, it's all written down on the internet, this is how it should go. Uh, and in a way, uh, there's a domination going on towards men in this context of the twin flame. Uh, I think, you know, women have really found their voice since the 60s, since the women's rights era. And finally, here we're in the second millennium. They're, they're coming on strong, and that's good. And, uh, but I see that now the women have gotten so strong that in some contact in the twin flames that they're actually trying to tell their men how to think, how this is how they should be, they should open up more. 
what I feel is that uh, the women should remember where they came from, their struggle and how it felt, and that they should remind themselves when their male mate wants to be empowered too, that they should let them be men. And, and uh, uh, if they do want some help on being more expressive, when the time is right, they will ask. They will know that the door is opened. But I think there's kind of a, too much of a push to push upon this twin flame uh, concept. Now, the twin flame concept is nothing new. All they're doing is taking a bunch of other concepts and putting them together and giving it a name. It's been together uh, in all of art, Romeo and Juliet. You even look at uh, uh, the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she said, take this apple. Mm -hmm. well, that, that'll give me the knowledge of good and evil. Well, you know. And so I see that women are strong right now. They're just finding their wings. They're learning how to fly uh, and be boisterous and, and uh, speaking their minds. Uh, and I think there's going to come a point where we're going to actually almost have to start generally thinking of the masculine energy and start honoring that because it looks like that's getting overlooked now, okay, in these twin flame relationships and some other contexts. Uh, so that's where I believe it is. I think that the women who have found their power, more power to you, speak your mind, speak from your heart. But as you see your man uh, growing as a person, nourish his masculinity. Nourish, nourish his journey. Don't try to suppress it with this ideal of women's power. The whole thing in prophecy is that the women and the men come to balance. Now, there's one aspect that I'd like to mention also about the twin flame, and I've done a lot of research, and I'm by no means any expert uh, uh, on this subject, but in the twin flames, it is believed that that there was a split in the soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that they were reborn at different times and they've met each other along the way. And now in another lifetime, they meet again, but they're supposedly whole soul, but they need each other to wake each other up, to show each other where they're triggerable, to show each other where their karma has built up, to work as a team. But I think, I really tru truly believe in a successful relationship. You bring your own power to it, your own whole person, not needing somebody to complete you so you can feel whole, so you can feel like a whole person. So I think for women, they need to acknowledge that their, their man needs to be masculine. That's their energy, okay? And men need to recognize that this is where women are on their path. They're starting to feel really strong. And to give them a little leeway to let them find what they can and what they can't do and acknowledge that, that they're finding their strength. And there's going to come a point where men and women will acknowledge and respect each other wherever they are. But the biggest problem I think, see with the women that are getting strong in the context of the twin flames mm -hmm. is that they're trying to coerce their men before they're ready. They're pushing them away and they're away from them. And so I think from a woman, I would suggest to a woman who feels this empowerment to let their mate know that when you are ready, I will help you open up your heart. But don't use any manipulation, psychological manipulation, emotional manipulation. Uh, when you fell in love with that person, were you falling in love with the person that they can become or that the, the person that they were? Mm -hmm. Were you in love with the ideal of what, how they can grow 
all what you were in love and are in love with the person that you fell in love with. Right. And so I see also in the twin flame context, uh, and I'm using this as an example for the balance of the masculine feminine, is that uh, it's being pushed too hard before men are ready. So once again, let your man know uh, mm -hmm. if you that you are here when they want to be able to talk. And if they're not ready, just remember, did you fall in love with that person or did you fall in love with the person you wanted them to become? Right. That's kind of a little bit how I feel right. in general. Right. Which takes us back to this awakening process for the guys. I'm just talking about the guys right now where in the old relationship, you were supposed to be the man. You had a list of things you were supposed to do because you were the man. Mm -hmm. okay. And, and I, I think that we're coming. Okay. What I really think is that I'm coming from my cosmic self. When I say this, that I am, who I am and my journey through all eternity has been me so far okay and this is that awakening process is that I'm beginning to know who I am and and the same with with all of us we're waking up now that really requires some a lot of personal time Yes. Sit by yourself. Yes. So you don't depend on somebody else to reflect off of you saying, am I doing it right? You need to trust your own self, like you're saying. Personal time is very, very, very important that you give yourself the answer. You don't have anybody else to validate your answer. You find them, and you become confident in that. Right. That's really important, that personal time. Right. And And... And here's, here's another thing that I've noticed that, so you meet a guy who has, is awakening. He's found himself. He's, he's found his light. He's found his, his gig, you know, and most guys, you know, once you get to that point, they're very compassionate men, very loving men, and they're very attractive meaning energy wise okay you're attracted to that kind of energy but if you're not in the new world place if you're in that old relationship vibration the habit would be to go in and change that guy meaning now you want him to go get a job and work real hard so he can buy that house for you. Okay, mm -hmm. that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't. It sounds like there's an energy drain right there. You have an example that you gave right here. It could be either way, manifest. But in yeah. this example, you gave it as a male who has found his empowerment. His energy is, is attractive. Yeah. Then, in, then you put in the context a woman who has not found that inner light and now what there is is instead of a give and give to each other without taking I have empowerment you have empowerment there's the female in this example taking the energy like an energy vamp from the empowered male and trying to change the man into something that he is not but essentially that woman in this context who has not found this inner life, this inner attractive energy, mm -hmm. is actually drawing energy off this man. And so now is, here's my energy, I'm taking your energy, there's no balance. So if the woman in this case, and like I said, it could be the opposite it's scenario, absolutely. but in this case, 
uh, were to find her own empowerment, then when she got together with this male, it would be like thunder and lightning. There would be no sucking energy. There would be no, are you this and that, I'm giving this to you, and the other person getting drained. So uh, I see what you're saying in this point. I just wanted to bring that point up, mm -hmm. that if you have your empowerment, you're comfortable with who you are, mm -hmm. regardless of all your faults and good attributes, and the other person who has found that, and then you have a chemical attraction, you have commonalities attractions, mm -hmm. you have similarities, then you you can build upon that and you've already found your empowerment prior. So both parties are bringing something to the table. They're not sucking the energy from the other person. And so somebody who has found empowerment gets together with another person who has found empowerment. That's where the magic happens. But if one person lacks and that person who lacks tries to change the person who's already found their empowerment, that relationship is absolutely unequivocally doomed, period. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if the trend is not going to be uh, that people are going to, to be singular, um, you know, um, as, as some people do marriage as a, a cultural thing, you know, or a religious thing, you know, um, maybe it's for a tax thing. <laughs> There's a million reasons to get married, you know, but I'm just wondering if, if what we're coming to in this new world where we are, this is, this is, this time of transition is not easy. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I think that, there's going to come this this balance in in being self. I, I've talked about this before that in 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 a perfect world that I know, every single decision is based on balance, whether it's balancing yourself or even right outside of yourself or your home or your family or your community. There's always balance is is the foundation for for that and um and i'm it, it's going to be very interesting to see how as we evolve into our into ourselves our our conscious whole selves how we will uh transition relationships and um and and how how they can you know i mean you know getting married and getting divorced is is pretty common and and it's sort of acceptable and and we're changing you know how do you be in a relationship and give the person the freedom as well as yourself to continue to change because i'm changing at an at a very rapid rate right now. And I bring up this this uh, this conversation about relationships because I think everybody's wondering what we're doing. Well, so elaborate on that a little bit, on your how do we. Was that a rhetorical question or was that an actual question? No, that was just rhetorical. I'm just, I'm just, okay. you know placing out ideas out there as, okay. And, okay, and let's just say we're the first waivers here. So let's just say we're the ones who are, are making this transition and making these changes. And, and as an observer, and of course being at the age that I am, it is very interesting to see how we are changing relationships by changing ourselves first. Yeah, I think of Gandhi, you know, be the change that you want to see. There you go. And I think that's really coming about more commonly. Uh, 
Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with the self. And I think that self-kindness, self-compassion, self-love. And if you can practice that through meditation, loving kindness, meditation, compassionate meditation, and then you train yourself during meditation. So this way, when you're not meditating, you have trained the mind to be able to be compassionate towards towards challenging situations, Mm -hmm. toward relationships. And if you can have compassion, love, and kindness to yourself, then you can give it to others. Otherwise, if you just read it off a cereal box or something out of Cracker Jack or, 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 you know, a fortune cookie, be kind and compassionate means absolutely zilch, diddly, nada. And so people are throwing these ideas around, oh, be compassionate towards your brothers and sisters. But the first time they're triggered, the first time they're challenged, they turn to hate or anger Mm -hmm. or fear. Mm -hmm. And so this change in the relationship needs to start here and needs to start with authentic practice towards self. So when these challenging situations or non-challenging situations come about, You'll be giving from an authentic place. Right. So I think with this new new age or new world or whatever you want to call it, that's coming about. People are bringing this out more often. They're being more boisterous. They're making their posts on Facebook and Google+. Plus and okay. That, that would have to be your area. That question, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sheila just got a pop-up text. So I'll wrap this up, and then you can answer that question. And Did you Rachel, see that, too? You know, Rachel, I would love for you to come on if you if you, if you you could or if you wanted to. I would love for Rachel to come on here because this is very, you know, um, she brought up what about same-sex marriage? What about, you know, I mean, we, we were talking male and female and the balance, okay? We're talking about balancing self, okay? And once, okay, here was my training. Okay, my training was we want you to find your ultimate loving self. So we want you to think about a moment where you were at your ultimate of love and joy. Okay, that would have been holding my children for the first time. Okay, that's holding, that's little puppies. That's, that's a, a feeling that just goes deep within. And they said, now get that vibration within you. Feel how it feels to hold that infant or the puppy or whatever it is. Feel how it is. And press save. Feel that vibration within you and press save. That right there, my child, is your compassionate, loving self. That is who you are. And you need not change that for anyone or anything. I have a brother that is gay. Beautiful person, uh, loving person. Uh, when he first told me about it, the I was not upset because I kind of already knew it, you know. And the person that he's with is a beautiful, 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 beautiful person. And when I'm around them and I visit, which is very rare, I don't think as same sex. I see the heart, you know. But with that said, what you just talked about was a visualization of a practice that a person can do. And you can do that daily. Uh, I would suggest that anybody who is considering meditation, don't jump into the advanced stuff to hurry up and get enlightened and awaken. Jump into the loving kindness right off the bat. 
Because I'll tell you what, you don't need a twin flame to bounce off of to show you where you're triggered. You got to find it yourself so you can make it yours. But I'll tell you what, if you jump to the advanced meditation, there's a dark side to it. <clears throat> when you start meditating and looking at the inner works of your mind and looking at the patterns, uh, when you're totally honest with yourself, assuming we're in the advanced meditation and we haven't done the loving kindness, there's going to be certain aspects of yourself that have been suppressed, trauma, that's going to disturb you. Yeah. And that's when most people turn on the path. They go, oh, it's supposed to be rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's not how it always works out. It, you, you, as you start to progress, as you start to awaken, you're removing these layers that block up your already peaceful state, your already awakened mind, your already enlightened mind that are only coming up. So don't jump to the advanced meditation first. Go towards loving kindness. Mm. Master that. Get a stability to that. And then when you go to the higher things, when these afflictive emotions that are finally rising to the surface, when these traumas that are rising to the surface, surface these blockages, because it is loving kindness meditation toward yourself, you'll be able to deal with them better. Mm -hmm. So start with that. And also, as we mentioned, if you can be compassionate toward you yourself and loving toward yourself, when you see somebody else suffering, you can have compassion on them. When you see somebody angry, you can have compassion on them because you know it's coming from a place of fear. You know it's coming from an experience in the past that this experience reminds them of. And you can just sit and be patient. And maybe the best thing to do is not say a word until the water settles, the mud settles, and then maybe relate, you know, I know how you feel and that's the reason why I didn't say anything. So a lot of times our best recourse in the situation when we're triggered uh, is to not say anything at all, to not bounce back to that person, their own anger. Because now if you do, they'll have a focus for that anger. <clears throat> but if you just restrain yourself and endure that pain that they gave you, as difficult as it is, yeah. that negativity will come back on them. And I've actually had two people that did that to me before, and both of them came over and bought me a pizza to my house. <laughs> And apologized, <laughs> literally, nice. two different times. The other guy, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I deal with a lot of veterans that have PTSD, you know. And uh, anyway, long story short, one guy was too embarrassed to come over, and the pizza man said it was your neighbor. Such and, such. <laughs> and then I called him up, and he said, you know, I felt so terrible for what I said two months ago. I've been suffering because of it oh. the whole time. And I, my total response to him at the time when, when he did what he did was don't worry about it, man. But his own guilt, because I didn't react to him, yeah. just hurt him so bad. Right. Right. And so that's a lesson we can learn. You know, when somebody does harm to us, can we restrain ourselves and endure the pain and not pass it forward? If we react, then that person reacts back next time. Next thing you know, we got to apologize. They got to apologize. Sometimes it's better to bite your tongue. So anyway, to recap what, I, what I'm saying in this before you answer that question that was said. Mm -hmm. Loving kindness, compassion towards yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the very first thing. And like you mentioned, spending personal time. Mm -hmm. Look inward. Find your own answers. Make them yours so they come from an authentic place not mimicking somebody else's idea. Right. Even Gandhi, you shouldn't mimic his idea. You should make it your own. Right. Even, you can name Muji, all the great teachers, Buddha, all the wonderful, marvelous teachers. They wanted you to believe in yourself. That's right. They were showing you, they were talking in retrospect of the experiences they had, but they weren't trying to get you to mimic their experiences. They were trying to point towards the realization that they had and that if you too go down this road through these practices and methods, you too will come to these realizations. But so often people are trying to mimic these ideas of spirituality. Now, the ego can assimilate anything, even spirituality. That's right. 
So enough said on that point. What, what's the question that was Rachel brought up? Um, I think we covered it a little bit. We're, our time is up now. We're going to have to continue this. I think we should have a panel discussion about this. I would like to. I get, would be up for that. I yeah, would be up I'd like to get several people up here to talk about their the change in relationships that we are experiencing in our new world. I think it would be fascinating discussion. I think that would be great. I'd like to add somebody to the panel that totally believes in the twin flame, but that can would, present. Totally believe, but can present it from the Tibetan, I mean, from their perspective. Right. Without us having to accept or reject there. That's right. Just so people can understand it. Then somebody that's against it. Yes. Okay. And somebody maybe who's like experienced. <laughs> right. Or somebody who has experienced it. Yes. And came out the other side. Yes. Maybe somebody who's experienced it. And still continues on in that twin flame relationship. So it's really not about a matter of who's right, who's wrong. It's right. a matter of understanding each other's perspective. That's and true. even though this 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 uh, masculine and feminine energy is put into the context of twin flames, there is still a lot we can learn from that. Because you got to think, why are these people? searching for a twin flame, is, is there really something deeper on a level that we don't know about that's really not out there? So anyway, I could babble away all day long and enjoy talking with you. All right. And, uh, well, okay, peeps, we gotta, we, we're we going to get this thing rolling. I hope you've enjoyed t today's discussion. I hope you tune in whenever we have a panel because that would be, that's going to be awesome. So thank you, Ken. I love you. Thank you for coming to the love show. You. And peeps, from my heart to yours, namaste.